two different airlines coming in here. So is that going to work for two different ones? That's correct. Yep. We, we, uh, we've we built in expandability into this uh, floor plan. I think we're showing now what would be four positions here. Uh, it looks like we could potentially even include a, a fifth position if you had a potential low-cost carrier, like, say, an Allegiant Airlines or a uh, Frontier or or something along those lines. They typically like to operate with a shoestring budget, uh, very minimal infrastructure. So, uh, so yes, we do have the ability for uh, ticket counters and, and space for additional airlines. And I'll show that in some of our renderings on the interior. You'll be able to see that sort of right here, uh, Councilman. Um, so this is showing sort of just a general layout of potential one airline. And then we actually show, you know, one and then a half of one there at the end as well. Yeah, thank you. Of course. All right. Uh, please just uh, keep rattling questions off as they come in. Um, this was a really great discussion that we had, one with the airport board, and then as, as it materialized with the uh, uh, with the design committee. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, I guess this is a really unique design feature that we have for an airport, is that we have uh, what, what could be considered, I know it's, it says conference room here, and that's kind of uh, what the discussions were um, with the FAA, but... Uh, right now, what we are showing on the second level is actually sort of an observation deck. So, and I'll show that in the rendering again. But basically, it allows the public to to sort of be active participants into the uh, airline process. So they can come upstairs or use the elevator, and then look out these uh, these windows out to the airfield, and uh, and really see their you know their loved ones take off, board, and, and you know fly out or come in even um, either way. Uh, that's a, a unique feature that I think is kind of bygone. You don't see that on, on many airports um, in the country at all. It used to be a, a mainstay of uh, older airport terminal buildings, and I think it's really great that uh, Watertown chose to uh, put that in here. Um, the uh, airport administration then will also be uh, included on the second level as well as a large mechanical space. So uh, that's really uh, largely it for the second level. Any questions? Doesn't look like it. All right. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to quickly, I know my time is about up, but I appreciate the questions coming in. Um, I'm going to kind of walk through some of the, uh, I'm going to go actually right into the renderings because I feel like this is, uh, we can talk about the, the finishes um, as they come in. But uh, right now, these are the renderings um, uh, for the terminal building. This this band up at the top is what is called a channel glass. So that'll kind of glow. Um, that'll that'll be sort of uh, a translucent glass that'll uh, provide a glow um, at night. Uh, then we can use uh, that as a background for some signage. Um, we are in the process of trying to work through some signage options to provide to the design committee. Uh, we are going to reach out to some of the local signage providers in Watertown and see if there's kind of a unique solution that we can provide um, uh, to keep sort of a or to ha add a level of permanence to the uh, airport signage here. Uh, we think we can probably add some channel signage uh, with a, utilizing an aperture up at the, the top of this, um, I guess at the rooftop level, to provide the Watertown Regional Airport signs. And then we are showing uh, sort of a logo sign uh, at the south end of the terminal building as well. Um, the next rendering here is uh, again at night, showing that kind of lit up. Again, these are just representations, but uh, it, it glows uh, very nicely here in this image. This is a little bit blown out in the front. I know it's looking awfully white, but uh, just a, a daytime render. You can see the canopy as it uh, sort of protects the passenger flow. Uh, looking back into this uh, corner is the, the checkpoint area. And then from that green space uh, that we showed in front of the airport terminal building. This is from the air side. One very important item to note that I don't want to overlook is, is that there will be, right where my cursor is, a passenger boarding bridge that comes out of that door, which shown as a white door. Um, and so that's typically where your airline is going to park. 
getting into the interiors then these are the uh, interior renders so um, we sort of play off some of the structure that will be coming in uh, along there will be some cross bracing that happens along here as well um, with these columns and then uh, providing really is trying to warm up the interior of the space we recognize that that this building being in an industrial park and we kind of kept it very clean uh, clean lines pretty modern but once we we wanted to avoid it feeling very sterile and so we thought that bringing in uh, a lot of wood wood grains uh, would be really nice that you'd step into the space and have it be well lit with natural light and then a, uh, a lot of woods as well so you're seeing the ticket counter as, we, as we've already shown uh, very oh forgive me um, into the back there you can see the rental car agency as well just looking towards bag claim this is uh, as you walk in the center of the uh, the terminal building this would be the um, that sort of pre secure restaurant area you can see that here's the ticket counter uh, stairs up to the second level uh, and you see that up upstairs observation area as well this is the post secure what would be considered the hold room or the departures lounge just uh, filled with some beam seats as it is uh, as it stands right now um, then as you see kind of that restaurant area that pre and post secure restaurant area uh, back here as well and this is just uh, back a little bit to show uh, what could be a, a, a the restroom uh, layout and finishes there too And then this is an image uh, from upstairs in that observation area, uh, looking back down towards that entrance. And I think I actually have a, a view from the, yeah, from downstairs actually looking at that entrance as well. Uh, that is what I have for presentation materials. I know I've gone well past my allotted time. Um, I appreciate any of the questions, but please uh, um, reach out, or if there are any further questions right now, if you wanted me to stop at any particular rendering, I'd be happy to do so. Anyone have any questions? Does not look like it. All right. Thank you very much, Mitch. Appreciate it. Thank you all. I really appreciate the, the time. And, and again, if anyone thinks of any questions uh, after the meeting, uh, just uh, reach out to anyone on the design committee, or if you're on the design committee already, just please uh, email me or give me a call. Uh, but appreciate it, Mayor. Thank you so much. Um, you guys have a great one. You're welcome. I know. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda is authorization for the mayor to sign an agreement with SkyWest for temporary rent deferral due to COVID-19 impacts on the air service industry. I have a motion by Holine, second by Vilhauer, and I'll let Heath introduce this one. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so as, as the council is aware, we've been dealing with SkyWest off and on here through the COVID pandemic. And there's been a, a dramatic impact to the airline industry because of COVID and the lack of uh, air service that's been used nationwide, which has essentially caused uh, a lot of their services to shut down completely for the for a, a good uh, component of what they used to provide for services. And um, one of the things we're trying to do in Watertown is. Uh, help Sky West out as much as we can while still providing, uh, making sure services are provided to the community to the level that they need to be and should be. Uh, so one of the things that uh, airport manager Todd Syrie has brought forward is a, uh, an amendment to their uh, payments to us. They provide us monthly uh, lease payments as part of their, the services they provide uh, to the city and it's in our contract that they provide those on a monthly basis. One of the things SkyWest has reached out to us and asked us, along with several other airports that they serve, is that those uh, payments be suspended or deferred to uh, a later time. They're looking to get three months of services postponed um, to be paid at a later date back to the city uh, prior to the end of our fiscal year. So by the end of this calendar year, we would receive those payments back what this does is it helps them. Uh, it helps their, their their cash flow a little bit right now uh, during this time, and 
uh, helps them keep their services afloat to smaller airports like ours. So we see it as a gesture, staff sees it as a gesture to kind of help them make ends meet the best they can. And uh, uh, airport board uh, approved recommendation of this to the council unanimously at their last meeting as well. So Todd, if I misstated something or if you have more uh, clarity to add to that, please feel free to chime in and Todd or I will otherwise help answer any questions. All right, thank you. Any questions, Councilman, Councilman Vilhauer? Uh, Todd or Kristen or Heath, give us some idea what the dollar amounts are, just ballpark uh, that we're talking about here. Todd, if I could defer to you on that, or Kristen. I can take that, uh, Heath, thank you. Uh, we're looking at about $15,000 for the three months, and then they're going to pay it back uh, the last five months of this year. Okay, thanks, Todd. Full. All right. Are there other questions? Todd, uh, just for clarity, uh, if I could, Mayor. Sure. Uh, the months that they're asking for, Todd, on the, the amended addendum to the agreement, what, how did we solidify that? What months exactly are they asking for? Sure. Thanks, Heath. Uh, so they're looking at the next three months. Uh, so it would be June, July, August, uh, rent, lease rent, and then May, June, July, landing fees, because we are always a month behind. Uh, they pay landing fees for the month prior. So it would be May, June, July, landing fees, June, July, August, uh, rental or lease. Great. Thank you, Todd. Okay, that needs to be updated on the actual agreement, the deferral agreement as the wrong dates in the packet. So... I guess we could include that in the motion when we approve it later. Or is that is that in the consent agenda, Heath? Um, yes, it is. So we should probably get that changed now. Councilman Holine, is that good with you? And yes, Mayor. Let's change them to the dates that... Um, and Councilman Vilhar? Sounds good. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll look for action. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Kristen? Albertson? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Boyer? Aye. Colleen? Aye. Lalum? Aye. Anti? Aye. Radensky? Aye. Roby? Aye. Bill Hauer? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Item C is approval of a professional services agreement for services associated with the study of the Highland Boulevard drainage basin project number 2013 with HDR Engineering Inc. in the amount not to exceed $83,935, authorizing the mayor to sign all applicable documents. I have a motion by Holine. Second by Rudemski. And Heath, please tell us about this one. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I'll start out and uh, by sharing my screen here. Is that coming through okay? Yes, we can see it. So on my screen is a, uh, a document from the proposal from the consultant. Uh, that we've uh, that, that their proposals before the council at night. We've had we've got the Highland Drainage Park area that we've kind of just called this and calling this the Highland Drainage uh, study that we're performing. What we've seen in the recent past, well, here for context, you, we're west of Highway 81. You see Highway 81 on this map, and then 10th Avenue North runs east and west on the bottom of this map. And then all these other lines are just uh, basin boundaries within this area. And over the years, uh, we've seen issues and had requests, uh, particularly on Karen Street and then other streets up in this area uh, for anything from a spring runoff to a, a minor 
storm events can sometimes cause local flooding in that area, or at least some nuisance waters that uh, end up either close to or in people's garages and things of that nature. So overall, what this area of town needs is, is kind of a neighborhood drainage study, and that's what we've uh, put in the budget for this year for 2020 to help address these issues, to do a comprehensive drainage analysis, and then from that analysis, derive some proposed um, stormwater improvements for this neighborhood. And so what we did is we got a selection committee put together for the consultants, and we received a good number of consultants' proposals for this work. And uh, HDR is the one that uh, rose to the top as far as uh, the services that they can provide us and, and how they propose to walk through this project with us um, as our consultant. So before the council tonight is a contract with HDR, they would perform this uh, drainage analysis and make some design, uh, perform some design of the recommended drainage improvements. Those drainage improvements might include uh, some storm sewer systems in these neighborhoods that don't have any storm sewer. They might include some channel improvements for some of the open channel conveyance that we see out there now. Um, we won't know yet till we walk through this, this uh, the modeling of this basin and determine what fits best for this neighborhood. Uh, but those are all components that we'll be working with the consultants on and uh, bringing forward for uh, future public improvements. So long story short, this is the contract with HDR. They perform the design and and, uh, and staff and the committee that went through the consultant proposals recommends HDR as the consultant that we go with. All right, thank you, Heath. Are there any questions from the council? Councilman Bilhar? Just a comment, I'm, I'm glad to see that, that we're addressing this. Uh, there was one landowner, I think, who has since passed away, but every time we had a hard rain up in that neck of the woods, we could count on getting uh, complaints, pictures, et cetera, and, and, it, and, and they were, it was definitely an issue. Uh, so I'm glad to see we're looking at, at trying to do something about this eventually. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll look for action. Roll call vote, please. Albertson? Aye. Bueller? Aye. Hoyer? Aye. Pauline? Aye. Lala? Aye. Nancy? <coughs> Aye. Radensky? Aye. Roby? Aye. Bill Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item D is authorization for the mayor to sign the bridge improvement grant big agreement and all subsequent grant documents related to the Third Avenue Northwest bridge replacement. Heath, you want to tell us about that, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Get a motion. So the uh, the big grant, the bridge improvement grant that it's known as the BIG program that the DOT administers. Um, as council knows, we've been working on the Third Avenue Northwest bridge replacement. It's been a design design process now with IDG for uh, several months, and we've applied for a couple different times uh, through the big program, a couple different means of funding. Some of those uh, were denied initially, and now that our bridge score has risen to the level of being competitive. There's a lot of communities and a lot of bridges uh, competing for these funds, but our bridge score on third finally rose to a level of significance to where we were one of the top bridges in need of replacement <clears throat> through this program. Um, so we were awarded that grant back in, I think it was the end of March when they came out with the award notices. Uh, and so what we have before the council tonight is the agreement that we enter into with the DOT for that funding program. And um, essentially that's what's uh, acted on tonight. We would move forward with design from this point on. A portion of the design, now that we have the grant, uh, will become uh, eligible under this big program. Uh, we're, so, so there's some benefits to that as well too, as far as having some of the design paid for and some of the engineering services on the back end during construction and the eligibility of those fees being part of this program as well. 
the the grant award was a total of uh, one million three hundred fifty six thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, that the uh, state would pay a maximum 80% cost of. We picked up the other 20% cost of that project. And otherwise, the terms of the agreement are very similar to the other big big grants that we've received in the past. That's all I have. If the council has any questions, we'd be glad to help answer them. All right. Before we have discussion, we'll look for a motion. A motion by Holine and a second by Vilhar. All right. Anyone have any questions? Hi, Don Roby, Councilman Roby. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to acknowledge my relationship as a member of the DOT Commission on this one. I will not be recusing myself. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Anyone else? All right, pretty straightforward. Um, we'll take a roll call vote, please. All in favor, say aye. Albertson. Aye. Bueller. Aye. Boyer? Aye. Pauline? Aye. Lala? Aye. Manti? Aye. Radinsky? Aye. Roby? Aye. Vilhauer? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. And next item is the 2020 street sweeping schedule discussion. And I see the street superintendent is here, but I'll let Heath um, maybe introduce it. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, also thanks to Rob. I'm going to give him 99.8% of the credit on this. Um, <laughs> Rob's done a great job at working through the street sweeping program that we have here throughout the city. And since he's come on board there as a street superintendent a handful of years ago, he's known that there's been ways we can improve our efficiencies and how we're uh, performing the street sweeping function across the city. You know, trying to maximize efficiency in the routes, uh, the streets that we target, the number of days throughout the summer that we target those streets. Um, a lot of thought goes into this, and I appreciate Rob's efforts greatly here. Um, so what he's done is he's put together a map and an accommodating schedule for certain areas of town. And Rob and I sat down, we talked about this, we looked at it. What I did is just asked him to go ahead and administratively, administratively implement this plan, but still bring it forward to council for informational purposes. So by all means, I did want to stress, this is a fluid plan, it's a fluid document. If the council sees issues or has issues or they hear from their constituents with questions about the sweeping process after we've implemented this, uh, feel free to reach out to Rob or I, and we'll definitely help address those or, or shift our plan accordingly and make it work to uh, meet different needs that may be out there that we don't know about yet. So all that being said, I'll shift it over to Rob, and he can walk through the logic and some of the explanation here on his, on his plan that he's put together. Thank you, Heath. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to share this. I don't know. Do I have to share that on? Okay. Ah. Can you guys see that map? Everybody else? <laughs> okay. Yep, it's up, Rob. Okay. Um, yeah, like he said, this is going to be a, a fluid document, um, especially in the beginning here because it's, uh, I can already see a few things that possibly could use changes in this. Um, each year, we're going to uh, look at the map and redo the schedule for, for the following year. Um, let's see. I'm going to zoom in here if I can figure this out. Well, then I have it on. Read. Just a second. Here, let's see. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. Okay, what I've done here is I've broken down uh, into 14 zones uh, minus the downtown district. Um, and I worked it all around the, the garbage can pickup um, throughout the city. So I went through their schedule and, and their zones, and I was hoping to be able to set up our sweeping based around 
their zones exactly, so we'd have five zones. But with the, uh, uh, the amount of staff we have and the equipment, it's just not possible to work as fast as they do with pickups. So, um, so I had to break it down into 14 zones. Um, yeah, 14 zones is what I have. So, and each year, the way I set this up, each year I will rotate, so we're starting in a different zone. Um, so it's fair, fair to residents uh, that we don't start in the same zone every year. We do, however, uh, the highways and the primary or the secondary routes, I guess I could, everything you see in the red here, I called primary routes. And everything you see in the blue, I call secondary routes. Anything that's in red is an area where there should not be parking. So we're able to sweep those anytime. And we kind of set aside Fridays or if we're caught up on a, a zone throughout, uh, say, part of the week or part of the day that that zone is supposed to be swept, then we'll go back and we'll, we'll hit some of the, the primary uh, areas. The secondary roadways, as you'll see where my cursor is, um, it has the dates here. And the secondary roadways... Um, those are scheduled for Fridays other than the first sweeping, the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Uh, I'm not sure if any of those days land on a Friday. I think maybe the 15th does, but um, July 10th, August 7th, September 4th, October 2nd is, is all Fridays. Um, the other thing with uh, uh, secondary zones, let's see. I have here secondary roadways may be swept on the same day as scheduled, scheduled zone days uh, that they are located in. Our, our sweeping guys, uh, based on how they sweep, they'll, they'll occasionally pick up a zone um, like this here. Uh, what is that? Um, I think that's 19th. No, that's 11th Street. Um, but they might pick that up on the same day that they're doing this zone 14. So and this stretch here too. Uh, the reason we have those secondary zones like this is uh, we've anticipated what's going to be higher traveled roadways and where people congregate more. Um, as you'll see down here, the Redland Center, um, out by the uh, interstate, you know, the, the truck stop out here, Stones, some of those areas, and then around McDonald's, those are some of the areas we try to hit early because there's a lot of traffic that comes into town off the interstate. Um, but for the most part, these uh, primary and secondary routes follow the, the highways and the snow routes minus a few of the uh, snow routes like 7th Avenue north here by the school or that goes um, by the middle school or the intermediate school. We're not calling that a primary route um, because actually the school traffic has changed there since they took the lights out at the highway. Um, there's a lot less traffic. You mainly have buses that go, go down 7th. So um, let's see here. I'll get back up to this zone. So you'll see on uh, the legend calendar here, um, Primary zones, like I said, no parking. Secondary roadways, there's no parking. Uh, well, we're asking for no parking on all these zones when they're scheduled to be swept. So just say you're in zone six and the second sweeping is on July 21st and, and the 28th, we're asking that you don't park uh, on the street at that time, on the 21st and the 28th of July. It, it's pretty difficult breaking these down by exact dates because there's so many variables with street sweeping. Um, rain is a big thing. You can actually sweep very well uh, keeping the dust down when it's a light mist of rain. But if it's, if it's to a certain point where you're getting more rain, it'll start to puddle up and it won't pick up the debris. It's, it's, it's a mess. So we we stop at that point. I have built this schedule with a, a little bit of margin in there. We're leaving Fridays as, as our maintenance day and our margin day. Um, we obviously want to pick up, you know, like secondary roadways, I said, is on Fridays. Um, if we're caught up with a lot, we'll jump back on primary roadways. The downtown business district, 1DT here you'll see, 
all in the yellow in there. Um, we do have that set up um, to do more sweeping down there, and we've found over the years that I think with some of the businesses downtown that stay open late, people tend to make uh, more of a mess down there. So we do want to clean that up more often. Um, uh, so we do have that scheduled more. Now, some people might ask, too, on this schedule, we do not have alleys or public parking lots shown as uh, part of this schedule. Uh, we're doing them as needed, um, and we at least that's the way we're looking at it up front. Um, I do contract out our alleys to be swept um, by a company that has a smaller sweeper, and it's... Um, our alleys, a lot of our alleys are, uh, I would say, underbuilt for our big sweepers. So I do hire a company to come in and do the alleys. They've helped us with parking lot work, too. Last year, they helped us, uh, oh, I, I would say, towards the late summer, they helped us with parking lot clearing. And that's a big help to have them, too. So um, let's see. Yeah, it's been, this has been a long time coming. We've known that we've needed a sweeping schedule. Um, we've never had one before in the city of Watertown. I did a lot of research of other communities throughout the country, um, seeing what they had for a sweeping schedule. Aberdeen has kind of a unique schedule. Um, I really like their schedule, but uh, they, what I noticed was a little different than uh, what I wanted to do. Their schedule would show certain streets there was a bunch of streets with the uh, that were highlighted red and they'd say just every friday that those streets are uh to be swept but there's so many streets there's they won't get them done every friday so they're asking people to not park on those streets on every friday so i tried to break it down uh to uh, show more detail on dates so you'll know when we're going to try to hit it. And if we don't show up on those dates, say like in uh, Zone 1DT, the fifth sweep will be on July 10th. If for some reason, if, if it's downpouring, of course, we can't sweep. Um, but we'll, we'll try to, uh, well, in this case, we do it a week later on the following Friday. Um, downtown is set up to be swept every other week at this time. So... Um, Let's see. As you'll see, the important sweeping information I have on the right here. Um, one thing I noticed while I was sitting here, I do say that our regular sweeping schedule ends in mid-October of each year, um, but I actually don't say in that when, uh, when we start. The schedule will start at the beginning of May each year. Um, more than likely, we're not going to have snow on the ground, but two years ago, we, it did snow on May 1st, so you never know. <laughs> um, so anyway, with that sweeping schedule, uh, the beginning of May to mid-October, that's about when you start having leaves falling on the ground, and our, our sweeping at that time is based on where the leaves have fallen the most, uh, the older areas of town where cottonwood trees are. Uh, we try to get those picked up before uh, it gets too cold to sweep or snow falls because in the spring of the year we have issues with leaves clogging drains. So we really focus on those um, areas that have a lot of leaves uh, falling in the fall. Um, let's see here. Yeah, of course, we don't do any private streets or parking lots. Uh, people might, there, cause some of this information is, is kind of answering questions that I anticipated might be out there. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. But like Heath had said, this is going to be a fluid document. We will make changes. This is the first year. Um, I'm sure it's not going to be perfect the first year, but I'm hoping going into next year, uh, I'll learn enough uh, to correct things on this and hopefully have a really good map. And I'm also hoping uh, that next year, I'm hoping to put these out in the, um, along with the utility bills, put a, a schedule out with that. Um, for this year, I'm going to have uh, put it on the website, and then I'm going to talk to IT about putting it on GovTV. Um, uh, 
and I think those are the most, uh, well, I'll put a PSA out as well uh, once this is approved. So any questions, I guess? Well, I would just like to say this is awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate this. And I think that we probably have the most talented map creator, street superintendent in the nation. <laughs> you drew this yourself, and it's, it's beautiful. Good job. Um, I do have a question, though, about the, the – some of them have two or three days. Do you, does it take two or three days, or why do you have it that way? That's a good question, Mayor. Um, I sat down with our senior broom operators. Um, one of them has been with us for 24 years and the other for 14. And I based uh, the sizes of these zones, a um, couple, couple criteria here. We had uh, areas showing where you can break it up into one or two days. We have zones that are pushing uh, one day. Our, our most dense zones are uh, two, three, four, five, six. Um, those, those take a lot longer. Um, and that's how we broke it up. If I did break it up into one-day zones, we'd have a lot more zones. And as you'll see, the initial cleaning, uh, let's see here. The initial sweeping, the first sweeping of each one you'll see has two to three days. Um, like zone two shows three days for the initial sweeping. Uh, zone three, three days. So it, it does, I think we have three days on yeah, zone eight. We have only mm -hmm. two. But this, this is based on what my operators really felt they could get done in a day. Uh, and actually, you guys don't see, I have another map, um, or I'm sorry, a uh, calendar that we have our, our working schedule on. You guys here can see it. But um, this is for our staff, this map is. And it actually shows in the beginning of the season, we're trying to always run three brooms to do the initial cleanup. Um, uh, right now we're running two because we've lost one of our uh, sweeping operators. Um, uh, he took another job. Um, but that, uh, that's all based on three brooms for the initial sweeping. And then after that, you'll see um, we don't say how many brooms we're trying to operate during these uh, dates. But everything like the second, third, and fourth sweep in a zone five here is with two brooms. I do the initial cleanup um, with three brooms we try. And then when leaf season rolls around, we try to run three brooms again. Um, so we can try to get those drop inlets cleaned up good. All right. Thank you. Councilman Hoyer? Um, Rob, I, I really appreciate it. And I'm, it's partially because it's my ward, but um, with the downtown that you're trying to go after it after 3 a.m., just, of course, because there's a natural parking issue that occurs until 2. Um, I was kind of wondering, as of right now, the way we have that set up, do we have any mechanisms in place to inform people the day before or that afternoon that it's going to happen? Do we need to put a little teeth into it to get people off the roads there because I do know that on the kickouts all throughout the downtown there's this little area that always has a little trouble I you're nodding so I mean yeah you know. <laughs> that's true um uh yes we've been talking about um what we have done a handful of times as you might have noticed a couple weeks ago when we did the downtown area we put out uh, uh cones with no parking signs on them um we're anticipating doing that, um, putting them out the, the evening before. So, like, say downtown's done at 3 in the morning, 3 to 7 a.m. is what we're saying. We're trying to hit the downtown area and clean it. Um, that would be on every Friday morning. Uh, so Thursday afternoon, about 4, 35 o'clock, we'll put uh, no parking signs downtown. Um, all they are is just cones with lath in the center. To, to try to remind people that, that we're sweeping. I do want to get something set up that actually is signage we can put out that says, you know, please no parking from 3 to 7 a.m. Uh, street maintenance or something like that. Uh, we don't have anything right now other than lath that says no parking on, on a laminated piece of paper. <laughs> so we're working on that. But 
but yes, I, I think the downtown, will, uh, it'll be good for any of these areas. Obviously, we can't put signs out for all these areas, but the downtown area, um, you know, I could see where we might need that. And especially when we're doing parking lots and stuff, we have to do that uh, to, to um, uh, let people know we're going to be sweeping down there. So I'm pretty sure that's the route we're going to go is with cones. Okay. And this will be, like I say, this will be on the website. And I'm hoping to work with IT on GovTV. Maybe we can run it on GovTV too. And then next year I'm hoping for flyers after we have a schedule put together that would um, go out with the utility bill possibly um, so that each, each household would have a map of when they're scheduled to be swept. Well, I'm kind of wondering if we can even come up with a metal placard that would reflect even your street maintenance. Yeah. Just saying, street, please don't park street maintenance Fridays. Right. 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah, actually we could do something permanent like that. Uh, you know, uh, that's a good idea. Good idea. Anyone else have comments? Councilman Vilhauer? Just a comment. I, I don't think uh, people, because I, I know I didn't, uh, realize what all goes into this. You shared with me before the meeting started, Rob. I mean, it's not just a sweeper that's out there uh, at one time. You've got to... I mean, there's, there's more than that involved. You want to talk about that for just a minute, Rob? Yeah. Uh, in the spring of the year, generally when we have three sweepers out, um, a lot of times I bring in seasonal staff uh, to help with that. Uh, sometimes we have one to two dump trucks following these guys around where the street sweepers can actually dump right into the trucks and keep sweeping. And then while the trucks run out to the landfill and dump them, and uh, it, it improves our efficiency greatly because the guys don't have to run back to the street shop to dump there. Um, they just dump right in the truck that's close by and they keep going. Um, at times, we can keep three dump trucks uh, going. So a lot of times, uh, I'll have um, one, or one driver and two trucks, and it'll just rotate. So when he comes back from the landfill, and uh, with an empty truck, he'll jump in a full truck that the sweepers filled up, and then he'll run out to landfill with that. So he, at times, he really keeps hopping. <laughs> so it, we're, there is a lot that goes into this. I, uh, you know, when I sat down and started looking at this and, and uh, working with our staff on this, uh, I, I found out a lot of things. I learned a lot myself, you know. Uh, the guys go out there and they sweep, but... There's a lot of times you, you don't know all the inner workings of things, and I learned a lot about that. The, the brooms were sweeping at anywhere from two to five miles an hour. Usually two to three is pretty standard, especially in the spring of the year. The gutter brooms have to get that hard-packed sand out of the gutter, and it just doesn't come up easy, and they have to go really slow at times, mile an hour. And you can imagine, I mean, we have 202 miles of streets and alleys in this town. Of course, the alleys we're not doing, but um, uh, we farm that out. But it does take a long time. That's why I reserved two months, actually, to get through the first sweeping. And I think it's important to realize, too, that, yes, it's nice and makes our city look, look pretty, but it's also served an important uh, function as far as... Uh, you know, runoff and contaminants and you name it that uh, I don't think we, we appreciate enough what this accomplishes. Yeah, that's exactly it, Glenn. You hit the nail on the head there. It, it, uh, I actually put that as the last thing here. Street, street sweeping is not only done to beautify the area, but also to help eliminate pollutants from entering the storm sewer system and contaminating downstream rivers and lakes. We really want to... Uh, pick up as much of that as soon as we can, get it to the landfill um, to prevent it from going into our rivers. So yep. that's one of our main goals. So It's a Clean Water Act requirement that we do this and actually probably the single most important thing that we can do with our street maintenance to reduce pollutants. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's good that we're organized about it. Anybody else have any questions for Rob? Uh, Mayor, if I might just make a quick comment. Sure, go ahead, Councilman Bueller. Uh, Rob, just just a subsequent thing, and it, uh, another, I think, uh, good feature to that is the fact that if you're riding a bicycle or a motorcycle, especially a motorcycle, when that all that gravel and stuff gets cleaned off the street, it makes a big difference as far as safety goes for people that operate bikes. 
You hit the nail on the head, Bruce. I, I actually uh, put a little thing in here too um, about yard waste and stuff because a lot of times we'll, people will tend to occasionally blow their uh, grass clippings in the street and we end up coming by and clean, clean those up. But we do, I do put a line, or I did put a line in here that says do not dispose of yard waste, uh, which is leaves and grass clippings in the roadway. It is a danger to mo motorcyclists and also a violation of city ordinance. So, you know, there's the, the information that's over here. I, I'm, like, a, like he said, this document is fluid. If we see some stuff that should go in here, um, let me know. Um, like I say, this, it's, this is going to be the first year. Hopefully we can improve upon it, and hopefully by next year we have a really good schedule put together. So yeah, This is excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, the next item on the agenda is old business. Do we have any old business? Not hearing any. Then new business. We do have item A under new business, discussion on coordinating 19th Street repaving, southeast repaving with upcoming DOT project. And I will have Heath tell us about that. Thank you, Mayor. And if Rob's still in the room, he can stick around for this discussion too. Uh, I will share my screen here quick with the council. So on the screen, you should see a, a page out of the plans from the DOT. And if you can see my pointer on the top part of this page here, this is Highway 212 running east and west. You can see the green north arrow pointing upward. Here's 19th Street. So we're in the southeast portion of 19th Street. You got Watertown Ford, Williams Flooring, the Harley Davidson shop, um, all along 19th here. Uh, we just met with the DOT last week to talk about Highway 212, Phase 2, uh, not only the main line paving project, but also a subsequent project that they're going to let regarding storm sewer improvements. So in 2021, next year, they're hoping to uh, install storm, storm sewer improvements at this location along 19th to help address some of these uh, stormwater issues in this area. They're, they're also going to perform some storm sewer improvements over on the west end, south of Highway 81. But they need to get this project bid and let and constructed in 2021 ahead of the 2022 construction season for the main line of Highway 212. And looking at the storm sewer project that they'll be running next year, we started to talk to them about the removals on 19th that they're going to have to take out in order to construct the storm sewer installations. And they're going to be getting into about a quarter of the width of 19th, about nine feet uh, worth of asphalt removal, which is about a quarter of the width of the street about a 36 foot wide street that runs through there. Uh, so we got to thinking, you know, for taking out a quarter width of the street, you know, what condition is our street in? Should we be looking at doing something in, in tandem with them so that when they go in and pave back in a quarter width of that street, we're not just, you know, blindly letting the state throw good money at a bad road here. And that's where Rob and I uh, and Justin talked about, um, you know, what to do, whether we can incorporate repaving the whole street with the DOT's project, where the city would be, of course, be responsible for our portion of that paving. And that's where we're at today, and I wanted to just check this off with the council, but what we would recommend is the, the, the DOT, first of all, they came back to us and said, yes, we're willing to work with you on this. Uh, we'd plug your paving into our project. Do you want to do it in 21? and pave it back in asphalt with our storm sewer project? Or do you want to wait till 2022 and pave it back in as concrete paving with the main line Highway 212 project? Uh, Rob and I bounced that around with and, and Justin and, and we think that because of the increased truck, truck traffic that we see back here, uh, you know, you got the loadout area, the Menards that comes off this road here. These curves here are really taking the brunt of the deterioration on this road. I don't know if you've driven it lately, but there's some 
pretty pretty sizable blown out areas with some pretty good potholes and alligator cracking. But then the rest of the roadway too has seen some premature fatigue with alligator cracking and, and potholes as well. In our opinion, we think it probably makes best sense because of the increased truck traffic and deliveries back here to Menards that we go ahead and wait until 2022 and have them repave this whole street section into concrete with that project. We're assuming that we're going to get some pretty good prices then uh, as the concrete prices for Highway 212 are probably going to be pretty competitive and it would uh, increase the longevity, the life cycle uh, for this road in the long run by putting it back in concrete. So that's really where we're at. I just wanted to kind of give the council a heads up and, and get some input from you. Make sure I'm not giving the DOT direction here that you guys wouldn't be in favor of and thought we'd just check it off uh, here at a council meeting with you guys at a public works committee. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Does anyone have any questions for Heath? Yes, Councilman Vilhauer. Actually, maybe I mis misunderstood you, Heath, or I'm confused. I heard you make reference a couple different times about the Highway 212 product as being a 2022 work. I mean, is, has that changed? I mean, that was always planned for 2021. Or what, what am I missing or what am I hearing wrong? Yes, no, good question. Councilman Zillhauer, that has shifted. The DOT schedule has pushed that phase two of Highway 212 back for construction in 2022. They are, uh, they've got quite a bit of right-of-way procurement left to accomplish along that route. Uh, they've got a lot of landowner negotiations to perform yet. And then uh, finalizing the, the design review before it goes to bid. And also these storm sewer projects that came into play while they were designing this. And so all that compiled has pushed their schedule back to where that construction would be in 2022 now. Oh, so, I mean, I, it makes sense what you're saying, but I, I think the general public still has in their mind it being a 2021 project. I mean, I think that word should get out uh, to the public unless I'm totally in the dark here and everybody else knows about it. Well, it, it's a surprise, but they've been saying all along that they that was their goal is to do it in 2021. But I I always figured it was going to be 2022, but it's the it's a DOT project, mm -hmm. so I mean you could make that suggestion to them, but that's theirs to announce. Mayor, it, can I say something? Yes, go ahead. Um, say Heath, I I wonder if a little bit of the confusion is, uh, and I didn't even know this until recently, but some of the storm sewer work will go on next year ahead of the the large project part of the project for 2022. I I think that's part of the confusion here. Yeah, I, you know some of the storm sewer work, uh, like I've explained, they do want to get that project plugged in in 2021. And I think, I don't know if it evolved in the scope of the storm, storm sewer grew enough to where they realized they couldn't do all that and the road work in one season. So that maybe led, landed to pushing back the mainline project. Uh, but I do know that is a factor. They've got to get in and get this storm sewer done in 2021 ahead of the mainline project. It's, it's very substantial work that they'll be doing on the storm sewer. Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilman Roby. Uh, I just want to add to that. Uh, I was aware of those delays. I don't think, I don't know how well they publicized those, but it had a lot to do with the amount of work with the storm sewer there. There's, that's not a, a real simple job. So I'll just add that. Right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mayor, I'll also note um, I would like to bring back this discussion from the transportation study that was performed last year and look at what the DOT has incorporated in their plans as far as those intersection improvements go. Um, it, again, kind of a separate topic here, but I wanted to mention this. I'll, I plan to bring that forward. I'm hoping the June 1st meeting to council and we can just clearly walk through what they're doing at each intersection as related to what's in their current drafted plans. And then that way the council's up to speed on uh, what's being proposed. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. All right. Any 
Anybody have any other new business? Mayor? Yes. Uh, Matt Roby. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I just thought I'd real quick mention, since we have a minute or two here, uh, it's um, been mentioned a few times that I've heard recently uh, with council members being concerned about uh, attending the uh, meetings of other boards and commissions, um, related to other public boards and commissions. Um, just so you know that uh, the council's attendance at those meetings is not required to be noticed. Uh, there can be a quorum of the council at other publicly noticed, properly publicly noticed meetings. Right, thank you. That comes up a lot at various different meetings. So if, if a, another board posts an agenda, you can have a quorum from the council, go to that because they're all members of the public. Just don't do your council business there. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Um, any other new business? We have no need to go into executive session, so I'll look for a motion to adjourn. A motion by Holine and a second by Radomski. Um, any discussion? Kristen, will you do a quick roll call vote? Yep. Albertson? Aye. Bueller? Aye. Hoyer? Aye. Holine? Aye. Lalum? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Radomski? Aye. Roby? Aye. Bill Hauer? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. We will uh, adjourn for our council meeting.